Hello friends, welcome to the Jazz Ranch. I have a special sale going on with my books right now. If you buy the Jazz Piano book here, you will get the appendix, which is 140 pages of exercises. You'll get that for free. So if you buy the hard copy or the PDF in my book, you will get the appendix PDF for free. This is a good deal. The appendix is a $30 value. Now I've sold thousands of copies of this book and I'm going to show you the inside of the book now. So if you watch this video, you'll see everything that's in my book and you will learn, you know, all about it and you can read the endorsements and so on. So here we go now with a look into my book. Okay, I'm going to take you through my book. I'm going to go rapidly because I want to get this through this without taking up too much space. But if you want to slow it down, just you can hit the uh, space bar to stop it and you can reverse it using the arrow. So here's volume one. And at the beginning you have the introduction and you have about the author. And then you have the table of contents, all the details here. Now I'm going to touch on specific details. But there'll be meter readings for these so you can uh, find these particular subject matter uh, very quickly using the meters. Now, start out, this is beginner level, so I'm starting out with the simplest thing. This chromatic scale you learn first. Now, I apply it to tunes right away so you can see how the chromatic scale is working within tunes that you know, well-known songs. And then you get the major scale, how the major scale is applied to songs, you know, and catchy phrases. So right away it's practical. Now you get right into the cycle of fifths. Important concept to understand music theory, how harmony works and so on, and chord progressions. You get all your scales here, major and minor scales here, intervals. Now we're into intervals, and you're going to have examples and a little quiz here now. You're going to have a fun thing to do with intervals in which I'm going to use every interval as a starting point of a specific song. And you're going to have to guess the song, and later you get the answer. But it's a good way to learn intervals and what they sound like to your ear. Now, we're going to apply the intervals and create chords. So the first thing is triads, three note chords, root, third, fifth, major triad, minor triad, augmented, and diminished. You're going to learn the four types of triads that we use most often and also how to apply them to a scale so they become practical. You can use them in tunes. Now, I get into tetrachords. This is a good way to understand how the tonic, the dominant, and the subdominant within the scale, how those three chords work throughout the whole system of, of scales uh, and keys. I didn't learn this in college, but it's an important theory concept to learn, the tetrachords. Now I get into chord progressions, you get your first tune to play. Very simple tune, two, five, one chord progressions. You get into inversions of chords. Now I'll skip over to get into altered triads now and a couple examples of more tunes to learn to play. And then you get into right hand chords, putting the chord into the right hand. Now the next one is we get into chapter six, we're into minor scales. So we have the natural minor, harmonic minor, the melodic minor, and so on. And you have tunes which apply these particular scales. Specific songs to learn that are practical. Here's a various techniques you can use in your left hand. And then here's tenths. You can use tenths and, and um, broken tenths on a specific tune. Now in chapter seven, you're going to get into jazz harmony. So now we're getting into more advanced beginner levels and, and beginner intermediate. So you're going to be playing four note chords and seventh chords and the types of chords and you're going to learn chord symbols. So you're going to learn to play with lead sheets. Now applying the scale tone sevens to a the scale tone chord, seventh chords, to a scale, you get the scale tone sevenths like this. And you get what their qualities are. So here you have them, all laid out for you, all 12 of them. All 12 scales and the seventh chords, the scale tone sevenths connected with each key. And now you have the inversions of the seventh chords. More on the cycle of fifths. Now we're going to get into next is going to be secondary dominance. Now this is altering any of the chords in the system of the scale tone sevenths to a dominant form. And this allows you to move to different parts 
the different chords within the system. So I'm sure you example that on a tune just in time, and I show you more examples on other tunes. Now this chapter 11 is really interesting. I harmonized in every possible way I could for jazz and blues, starting with simple just thirds and fifths, then like then two note harmony spread between the two hands to create tenths, and then three note harmony to create triads between the two hands, and then more three note harmony, various combinations, then adding sevenths to your three note harmony. Now four note harmony and adding sevenths, creating seventh chords in various combinations of spread voicing. So I've never seen this in a book, this breakdown. It's very good. Harmonizing in thirds and sixths, you get a couple of tunes to play, more tunes to play. Now jazz rhythm and phrasing. This is to learn how to phrase in a jazz in a syncopated manner rather than just taking a melody straight like that. Now we've syncopate it using jazz rhythm and jazz phrasing. Or it could be in other words a variety of different ways and it shows you how swing eights work and then you get an arrangement with it all written out for you and another arrangement using swing eights. Now you get the blues progression in chapter 13. It explains it in theory how you can change a regular diatonic melody into a blues melody by lowering the seventh and the third and the fifth. And now you have a blues to play. Here's a blues tune that I composed that you can play now. In chapter 14 you're in a stride piano. Shows you the rules or principles of stride piano. Then you get a simple stride tune to play. Another simple well-known tune played in a stride style. It's easy to play. And then you want to check out my stride um, exercises on my YouTube channel. Now Chapter 15 is spread voicing. So now we're going to have four note chords with the harmony spread between the two hands and how to do this. This is to get the professional sound, be able to add upper extensions. And you get an example, a simple example in a tune, a well-known tune. Here is the it's broken down for you spread voicings in detail. Harmonizing in four notes, different varieties of spread voicings, another tune to play. Here's another tune in spread voicings to play. Here's another tune all written out for you note for note. Here's another one in spread voicings and combinations. Now you get to play tenths in spread voicings, how that's used, and then you get right hand chordal technique in which I'm going to put the chord into the right hand now and then you have a bass line to play in the left hand. Now here's a wrap up with a review with all the techniques that you've learned in this volume one. That's the review and then you get a tune that uses all the techniques. And at the very end you have the answers to that quiz that you had earlier on intervals with each of the intervals laid out for you and then the song that they fit. So this is a very interesting way to end. This is the end of volume one. Now we're going to go into volume two. Okay I'm going to go through volume two now. Um, I've got them in separate volumes but I usually keep both volumes in one cover. It's just easier for me, but you can put them in separate um, three ring binders if you like. So you have the table of contents. Now you get a review of all the techniques you learned in, in um, volume one and applied to a song. Now I'm getting into block chords in the various positions. So you're going to get into inversions of block chords which are rootless chords similar to what Bill Evans plays and modern pianists. So you're going to start out with the 2-5-1 through the cycle of fifths in block chord position using economy of motion. Then that applied to a song and then applied to another song. And then you're going to get into upper structure chords. This is adding ninths, elevenths, and thirteenths. Creating color tones into your, putting color tones into your chords in both the right hand and left hand. Starting out with the right hand. Later on you'll see you get them in the left hand. So you have all the combinations here and practical applications of them. And then you get the upper extensions and spread voicings. And then you get a, a tune to play using these principles. And you get to another tune to play using these principles. Now we're going to get into right hand chord techniques and using color tones in the right hand. Adding the ninths in the right hand, the elevenths and thirteenths. Now we're, chapter 18 is bass lines. So you're going to get two beat bass lines and then you're going to get a four beat bass line applied to a simple tune, two beat bass line. Here's a two beat bass line applied to a well known tune. Now you get the principles of bass line for walking the bass, four beat. The stepwise, the chromatic, the octaves and fifths, the double no notes, and then the interval skips 
and then you have something to play using walking bass line. You have another tune, a standard tune to play using a walking bass line written out for you. And here's another arrangement of mine using a bass line and chords in the right hand. Now you have an example of a Latin bass line with a melody in your right hand, voice with chords. Now more on melodic jazz phrasing, how to phrase with a jazz feel, swing eights and so on. And then you, it's applied to a blues and you have blues techniques here and you have an example of a blues that I wrote out for you. And now how to apply blues techniques to a standard tune and there's an arrangement of a standard tune that you learn using blues techniques. All right, and then we continue here. Now we get into rootless voicing. So we're going to be using the A form, which is the first inversion, and then the second inversion, and then the B form, which is the third inversion. So the, the A form and the B form are the preferred. So that's the second and, I mean, the first inversion and the third inversion. So now you get uh, examples of all the way through the cycle of fifths using the A form, and then the second inversion, and then the third inversion, which is the B form. You get all the two five ones through the cycle of fifths. Now you apply the rootless voicings to Moonlight in Vermont. This is a Bill Evans type of sound. Now you use three note chords rather than four note chords in the left hand and using upper extensions. Now you use three note chords using upper extensions, another example. Now rhythmic comping. This is all on comping, but it's mostly for the left hand. I've covered comping in a couple of, of videos that I've done for both hands. This one is showing you the principles of comping and in the left hand applied to a standard tune. Now we're into jazz improvisation and the major modes. Application of the major modes and how they're applied to improvisation and taking you through simple improvisation stepwise. You know, learning the modes in scales, practice them in horizontal and vertical movement, ascending and descending, changing the rhythmic values, adding chromatic notes, and so on. It takes you step by step through a process to learn improvisation, if you think it can be learned. Of course, it takes more than just exercises, but that's, those are good exercises to learn. Now using a blues vamp, improvising on a blues vamp. So now you have an example of how to improvise on a blues using the principles that I talked about. Another tune using improvisational techniques and now we get into scales for improvisation so I'm going to talk about every scale every major scale you need to learn these are the most important scales not the, all of the scales there are but the most important scales to learn in the major the major scales the minor scales the dominant scales the diminished scales and so on so you have all the scales you need to learn now reharmonization, this is what jazz musicians do, we reharmonize tunes, particularly using substitutes. So I show you what substitutes to use, how to use them, I give you examples in tunes. So it's practical. You learn the principles of reharmonization and then apply it to a tune, and then you get tunes to play using these principles. Here's an example of a tune, very simple, might appear in a fake book, and how you would reharmonize it, all written out for you, note for note. Tritone substitution, Important principle for reharmonization shows you how to apply it to the cycle of fifths G7 go across you feed D flat 7 is the tritone substitute then applying the tritone substitutes to a tune Another tune to learn using tritone substitutes and substitute chords a simple arrangement and then something more complex using Reharmonization now we get into advanced concepts of improvisation the elements the well-balanced phrase the sentence the sequence uh, methods of vertical movement, horizontal movement, patterns, target tones, approach tones, all these different things, labels on them, and then how to use them in a bebop way with bebop exercises. Various bebop exercises, a standard tune, now a solo written out for that tune. Now an analysis of the solo using the principles that I talked about. And now here's an example of a Charlie Parker tune based on that same song. Then a song that I wrote and then a, t a solo that I wrote out for the song in more of a, a pentatonic uh, interpretation, modal interpretation. Then you have another solo for another well-known song and here's another solo for a well-known song. And then you have a well-known song played simply and then played with a blues solo, blues interpretation. And now you have at the end everything that you've learned so far put it all into one song and that that wraps it up so you know what it's like to print from a conventional music book right you gotta pull the printer out 
open it up, then you got to take the book, you got to find the page, you got to lay the whole book down in there, try to get it lined up properly, make sure that no light is going to leak in, and then you print. Now let's see what the result is. So here's the result. It's not lined up properly. You got leakage here, you got leakage here, out of alignment, and the page is cut off on this side. So now you got to do a whole process again, maybe 10 times. Wasted all that time, energy, and paper. You won't have that problem with this book. It's in a three ring binder. So you can easily just open it up, hit the snap, take the page out that you want to copy, put it in the printer, easy to line up, hit copy, and you're ready to go. And the result is it comes out perfect every time. Signing off from the Jazz Ranch, thanks so much for watching. And please consider buying my book to get the appendix for free. All you have to do is write to my email address and I will send the appendix to you free. So until next time, I'll say swing loose and we'll see you. Bye-bye. Take care.